So you're saying I go into NBC and tell them I got this idea for a show about nothing. <laughs> we go into NBC. We. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at preconceived notions and misconceptions that people have about certain TV shows. A few spoilers for some of these programs. It's so horrible. No, it's not that bad. Wait. Number 10, getting all of the answers matters, The Leftovers. On a normal day, 2% of humanity suddenly disappears. Although this drama hooks us in with a mystery, answers are inconsequential here. Sam? The show is more concerned with the fruitless search for answers that many of us embark on in the wake of tragedy. While the premise calls the rapture to mind, it just as easily could be applied to 9-11 or global events that the show predated, like the COVID-19 pandemic. We really don't know how to feel because we still wonder where they went and why. Above all else, The Leftovers is about how grief divides and unites us. The ending doesn't provide the most open and shut explanation. It's not even clear if this was the rapture. Those expecting answers miss the point, however. The central question isn't, why did this happen? It's how do we work through it? If I told you what happened, that you would never believe me. Number nine, Farrah Fawcett was in every season, Charlie's Angels. If there's one name that everyone associates with the original Charlie's Angels, it's the late Farrah Fawcett, who rose to fame as Jill Monroe. Watching a random rerun, you might find yourself asking, why wasn't Jill in this episode? Isn't she the main character? Firstly, all angels are equal. Second, despite being synonymous with the show, Fawcett was only a regular for the first season. Okay, but I can't be gone long. This won't take long. After exiting, she returned for another six episodes as a guest star. Co-stars Kate Jackson and Jacqueline Smith had longer tenures, even Cheryl Ladd, who stepped in as Jill's sister, Chris, appeared in more episodes. It's me. Who? <laughs> Chris. Chris Monroe. Maybe it's because Fawcett's star continued to rise after leaving, but the show that made her famous lasted four additional seasons without her constant presence. Jill? Number eight, it's a romantic comedy, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. A musical about a young woman searching for love. Sounds like a rom-com to us. I'd always hope I'd run into you one day. I mean, we had such a good time that summer. If you still think that after a few episodes, however, you're not paying attention. The series kicks off with Rebecca going to extreme lengths to reconnect with an old boyfriend, even though they're wrong for each other. There are other potential love interests in Rebecca's life, although they're not the healthiest choices either. That seems typical for the rom-com genre, but unlike some of the heroines you'd see Julia Roberts or Kate Hudson play, Rebecca's actions have consequences. That's right, laugh it off, Channy boy. I'm coming for ya. As Rebecca confronts those consequences, the show evolves into an exploration of mental health. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend is a love story, but one of self-love with romance ultimately being an afterthought. I'm responsible for everything that happened, all of it. Number seven, it's a lowbrow Star Trek satire, The Orville. Some people are quick to hate on Seth MacFarlane, assuming he's a one-trick pony. American Dad is often written off as a Family Guy clone, although both shows have different comedy styles and tones. Before The Orville even premiered, many expected the standard Family Guy humor in a Star Trek setting. No, 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 no. What's the matter? No, 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 no. Early reviews reflected this, but those who stuck with the show found it was more of an homage than a send-up. With detailed lore and involving characters, various fans argued that the Orville was actually better than the Star Trek shows they were getting at the time. You will surrender. You want the top or the bottom? I like to be on top. While it maintains a comedic edge, the Orville has gone to bolder places than assumed, showing McFarlane's range as an actor and a storyteller. If this doesn't work, will you marry me? Yes. Number six, it was always the Steve Urkel show, Family Matters. Steve Urkel stole the show in ways that a lot of people don't even realize. If you watch Family Matters from the beginning, you'll recognize several of the sitcom's mainstays. There's Carl, Laura, Eddie, but how come there's next to no Urkel? You'll keep asking that until episode 12, when Urkel finally plays a prominent role. Nice flowers. Yeah, thanks. On the way over, I stopped by the cemetery. <laughs> Urkel was initially meant to be a one-off role, but the character was so well-received that actor Jaleel White quickly became a series regular. Hi, Laura. <laughs> when Family Matters entered syndication, the creators reshot several cold opens from the earlier episodes to include Urkel, making it seem as if he was always there. It's hard to imagine the sitcom without Urkel, but the truth is that the Winslows almost had more peaceful lives. For the last time, you can't be seen in public with me. 
Now there's irony. Number five, Leslie Nope is a female Michael Scott, Parks and Recreation. When Parks and Recreation premiered, it inevitably drew parallels to The Office, both being workplace mockumentaries with some of the same creative figures. With Amy Poehler playing another quirky boss figure, it was labeled The Office with a woman. Admittedly, those first six episodes struggled to find their footing. Committees make things happen. Committees are the lifeblood of our democratic system. That's really good. Write that down. By season two, though, Parks and Rec established a distinct voice with Leslie getting out from under Michael's shadow. While both can be naive, Leslie proves herself to be much smarter and more selfless than Michael. I just have one thing to say! Together we can change Pommy forever! Let's do it! Both are passionate about their jobs, but there's no denying that Leslie is more competent at hers. And I know firsthand how very special the people of this city are. If these two ever met, we imagine they'd hit it off. Although, Leslie may take issue with Michael's that's what she said jokes. That's what she said! <laughs> Michael. Michael. Number four, a show to babysit your kids, Dinosaurs. With cute puppetry, a plethora of merchandise, and catchphrases like, I'm the baby! We can see why Dinosaurs is generally seen as a kid's show. We're watching this sitcom, though, people are usually shocked to find just how adult it was. Wow, pleased to meet you, friend. Feel free to baste me while we talk. Oh. We're not just talking about innuendos, although some jokes are more suggestive than we initially realized. The show regularly tackled serious issues from war to sexual harassment to divorce. Some topics are more relevant now, namely how the dominant species takes the environment for granted. Uh -huh. Oh, that's for kids. Yeah, you'd think that because they're puppets. So the show seems to have a children's aesthetic. Yet the dialogue is unquestionably sharp-edged, witty, and thematically skewed to adults. This comes to a head in the final episode, when the dinosaurs usher in an ice age, marking the beginning of their extinction. It's one of the darkest series finales ever, but hey, they're puppets. Therefore, it's for kitties, right? Dinosaurs have been on this earth for 150 million years. And it's not like we're gonna just disappear. Number three, nothing after season 10 is worthwhile, The Simpsons. If we made a list to the best Simpsons episodes, which we have, an emphasis on the first 10 seasons should be a given. It's unfair to say that everything afterward is disposable, however. Seasons 11 through 14 are consistently funny, with standouts like Behind the Laughter. This will be the last season. It's debatably around season 15 when the humor became less character-based. For every misfire, though, there are plenty of gems to unearth. From Gone Maggie Gone to Angry Dad the Movie. You got your wish, boy. I'm proud of you. Even more recent offerings contain some of the series' sharpest satires. Simpsons does Death Note, anyone? I am a Shinigami, a god of death. We may be past the golden years, or yellow years, but many post-season 10 episodes are still worth watching for their witty dialogue, slick animation, and ability to predict the future. As you know, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. Number two, it's about nothing, Seinfeld. Seinfeld promotes itself as a show about nothing, even making this a focal point of season four when Jerry and George create a series within a series. Just talking? Well, what's the show about? It's about nothing. <laughs> well, we couldn't say that Seinfeld deals with important problems. We wouldn't say it's about nothing either. The setup isn't that different from other sitcoms, where a group of friends hang out and go on dates. The difference is that Seinfeld is rooted in more mundane issues, but they're usually tied together in a well-structured plot where everything coincidentally collides. I won't lie to you, boys. I was terrified. As the series progressed, the stories also became much more eccentric. Kramer fries himself with butter, and Newman nearly eats him. That old sitcom storyline. Even the creators have acknowledged that there's more to the comedy than nothing. How did you get me to go along with that? A show about nothing. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, they're all corny and dated, multi-camera sitcoms. With single camera comedies taking over much of the TV landscape, modern audiences seem to look down upon multi-cam sitcoms as a lesser art form. Just because a show possesses a laugh track doesn't mean it's a relic of a bygone era. I Love Lucy is grounded in the 50s, but its writing holds up decades later. Are you tired, run down, listless? Do you poop out at parties? <laughs> 
all in the family spark debates that we're still having today. Friends continues to dominate in reruns for a reason. We can thank Will and Grace for the LGBTQ plus shows that followed. And yes, the Big Bang Theory is smarter than it looks. She is an arrogant subpar scientist who actually believes loop quantum gravity better unites quantum mechanics with general relativity than does string theory. <laughs> you kids have fun. Single camera comedies are taking sitcoms to unprecedented places. However, anyone who assumes that the multicam setup is outdated should revisit half a century's worth of brilliant television. Well, this is the land of the free. You never hear it that. Mr. Bunker, for some of us, America is not free. Is there a misconception about your favorite show that you'd like to clarify? Do so in the comments. Excuse me? That's my piano. It came with the apartment. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.